If you have considered buying a freeze dryer, that is a great decision. I have saved hundreds if not thousands of dollars in food savings alone by freeze drying food from my pantry and freezer. Buying a freeze dryer is a smart move, but there are many types of freeze dryers on the market. And if you have been wined and dined about buying a freeze dryer and have been given a choice of a oil-free pump, that is a decision that you need to be on guard about. Oil-free pumps have no business in being with a freeze dryer. This is an oil-free pump and this is an oil-free pump. If you buy a freeze dryer with an oil-free pump, I would strongly suggest you don't buy a freeze dryer at all and you'd be better suited in saving your money and buying a puppy. The primary reason why I'm against oil-free pumps is that the moisture that comes out of a freeze dryer is acidic on the pH scale. And that moisture going into a pump that is not protected with oil is going to eat up that oil-free pump. An oil-free pump has no protection against acidic vapor and it's going to eat out the bearings, it's going to eat out the shafts and the sills and in just a year or two, you're going to have to rebuild that pump. Now this pump right here is made by Scroll Labs and the parts and the service on these pumps are proprietary. And Scroll Labs makes a lot of the vacuum pumps that are internal to some freeze dryers. Uh, this pump right here is an option offered by Harvest Right and it is very complicated to rebuild and it is such a problem that Harvest Right has a, an entire shop of about three or four employees dedicated just to overhaul these pumps because they get eaten up by the acidic vapors coming out of their freeze dryers. The only solution to freeze drying is to have a pump that contains oil that can be changed. So save your money do not buy a pump that is oilless or oil free and buy a good premium pump that contains oil and if you think that oil changing is a drag or a hassle i'm going to show you how you can change oil in less than two minutes and it's easy peasy and it's not a hassle the two minute oil change starts at the end of the freeze drying cycle so as soon as you end freeze drying cycle, that's when we're gonna start the oil change. Well, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and open up the oil drain plug while the oil is hot. And I'm gonna go ahead and tip that forward and we're gonna take the top of the oil demister off and place it up here on top of the freeze dryer and that's it. That's about 17 seconds. This is part one. And we're just going to let this drain and we're not going to do anything with it until the start of the next cycle. So that's it. Part one. Beginning of the part two of the oil change is really simple. We're going to shut the drain valve and we're going to remove the block in the back just like so. Then I'm going to take my little measuring cup I have up here and I'm going to put that aside. Then I'm going to take my previously filtered oil and I'm going to put fill my pitch my measuring cup up to my predetermined um, line which I have up here to that mark right there and then it that gets poured into the pump. And then the funnel goes back into the measuring cup and I cover that up just so it doesn't get dusty. Then the funnel goes from here. I just stick that right in there for convenience. Take my Harvest Right pitcher, 
flip up the top, remove my little quart bottle I have here, dump the oil back into the filtering pitcher, put that back into place. This goes back on top of my freeze dryer. The funnel then goes back down into my jar, and then I replace the demister filter, and all this takes less than two minutes if you have everything staged the way it should be. And I'm going to go through this now and show you how I have everything set up and what you can do to make things a lot simpler to make oil changes a very simple little task. And one of the things I do that is different from what Harvest Right teaches is I change my oil after every batch. And I think that's prudent to do because because of the moisture that comes out of the freeze dryer on the pH scale is acidic and that's something that should not be in your pump and it should be removed as soon as possible. But anyway, I'm going to go through and show you the setup that I have for my freeze dryer and what makes it really simple to do an oil change. The key part to my oil changes is this little device right here. Now, if I remove the funnel and if I remove the little mason jar, I welded this little thing up a long, long time ago, and it may look kind of odd because this thing is actually made out of a square, but this actually had a purpose about three years ago. And you have to be an older Harvest Right freeze dry owner to understand this. But that's what it was for. Now, if you if you're an older freeze dry owner, you'll understand and you'll, you'll remember this little device. Well, I made this little device so I could open this up and drain my oil directly in from the pump. Well, Harvest Right discontinued this little device not too long ago. Well, actually quite some time ago. And so now, because I don't use this device anymore, I now can put my jar in here with a funnel to capture the oil. But since many of you out there do not have the ability to weld a device like this, I'm going to show you the next best thing. This is an extra wide cup holder. I've tried looking at O'Reilly's and AutoZone and a few auto parts stores and these are kind of hard to find. You might try maybe Walmart. They are on Amazon and I will put the link down below. Uh, this little tab that goes up and over this tab needs to be removed. Now, you can remove these by some good old scissors. You can cut these half the way off, or you can use diagonal cutters or any means necessary to remove this section of the cup holder. Just like that. Now, this plastic is not the best plastic. It can shatter, and if you're not careful, it can break. So please, don't do a Tim Allen and use self-tapping screws and an impact driver to attach this because you'll probably shatter the plastic. So when tightening these with screws, please hand tighten so you don't break the plastic. So for those that want to really do the <laughs> out there, hand tighten only, please. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hand and drill these by hand right now to make some pilot holes. But like I said, be careful so you don't end up breaking these by using self tappers. So you're going to see where I made a couple, just drill some holes through there. Easy peasy. I went ahead and drilled two corresponding holes into my cart and put two screws in there to attach this. Now, depending on where you have your pump, you may have a solid piece of wood or plastic coming down here. You can actually remove this 90, de 90 degree piece of plastic and move this lower down. The nice thing about this cup holder, because it has this little slot there, it makes it easy to be able to pull it, put in your cup. Now, this little cup right here, is from Home Depot and this could be found in their paint department. I can't remember how much it is, but I can put that down below. This is a handy little cup to have 
to change her oil with. So we're just going to go ahead and put that into place. And we're going to go ahead and I have my oil exactly where I like it, halfway up on the fill line. And we're going to go ahead and open this up and drain this out to see where it's going to come up on my measuring cup. Okay, so my oil stopped right there. So I'm going to get a Sharpie and I'm going to mark right there so that as I do future, future oil changes, I know exactly how much oil to put in here. So it'll be a lot easier to measure next time around. So that's exactly where I'm going to put my oil and it'll make it faster to do my oil change. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and pour it back into my pump. So this is all ready for my next oil change. I now want to go through what I have on top of my freeze dryer that helps my oil change. One thing I have is I have this small little Tupperware container and I have a question for you. When you take off your oil mist filter, do you place it like this? And I bet you do, but actually you shouldn't. When you take this off, you should place it this direction and I put then that's why I have this little container. You'd be surprised how much condensate builds up inside this filter. And if you don't turn it in this direction and allow the water to come out of this filter, when you put it back onto your vacuum pump, the moisture inside of this will actually drain back into your vacuum pump, into your oil. So I have this little container on top of here so that when I take this off, I can invert it back in the upright position so it can drain while my oil is draining. So that's the first thing I have. The next thing I have up here is my color chart telling me when it's time to dispose my oil. According to the National Petroleum Industry, vacuum pump oil should be disposed at 4.0. So if I take my oil right here, I can then gauge where my oil color is to see if it's good or bad. That's the second thing I have up here on top. The third thing I have is my container that's marked junk oil. This is what is at the bottom of my oil change and I'll show you what I mean by that. When I do an oil change, I let my oil sit up to a day or two after it drains out of my vacuum pump. That allows all the particulates in my oil, which a lot of times are little food particulates, to settle down to the bottom of the jar. So what I will do is I'll pour off the good oil that's on top until I see the bad chunky stuff coming towards the top and then I'll stop. Then I'll take my junk oil container and pour off all that yucky stuff that's in the bottom. I will then hang on to this junky oil until it gets so full and then I'll pour off the good oil and then all this garbage that's down inside and all the junky stuff down to the bottom will be recycled. So this is my junk oil. Of course then I have my measuring cup that inside has my funnel and, and this is pre-marked on how much oil needs to be refilled for my next oil change. And then of course I have my Harvest Right filter pitcher that has oil inside that's going to be refiltered from my previous oil change and this oil will be used for my next oil change. So this is what's on top of my Harvest Right freeze dryer that will assist me in my two minute oil change. Changing oil is easy. It can take less than two minutes. Harvest Right and I disagree on how often oil changes should take place. Harvest Right, uh, say Harvest Right, you can go several batches without an oil change. I think it's best to change oil after every batch to get rid of any acidic vapor or acidic moisture that might be trapped inside the oil pump. But having, having 
Having a freeze dryer is a great thing to have. It's an investment and it, it can be expensive, but it will save you a lot of money on being able to prepare for the future and save your investment that you've made in fruit, meats, and vegetables. So I hope this video has helped you in making the decision. Please do not buy oilless or oil-free vacuum pumps. They're just gonna cause you grief in the future. Whether you buy an oil-free from Harvest Right or Scroll Labs or somebody else, please do not buy an oil-free pump. Get a pump that has oil in it. Oil is needed for lubrication, for cooling, and for protection. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you like my channel, please subscribe. And as always, go forth and freeze dry the world, and I'll send you another video soon.